What is up, Kratics? Welcome to Afro Capability Testing Series for the new Teclasa Yosemite Rancher. This Benny's custom off-road vehicle has an intense amount of customization and will cost you over $1.5 million with upgrades. This off-road test is an update to my Afro Capability Testing Series, where I tested the majority of Afro Capable vehicles in GTA Online. I will leave the link to a playlist down below in the pinned comment where you will find all the other vehicles I have done so far so that you can compare. Before we start, if you have any questions as to how each obstacle is scored in full detail, please refer to the tutorial video which is linked in the pinned comment. Also remember that the most updated spreadsheet with all the Afro capability scores I have done so far will be linked in the pinned comment as well. So the following points for each obstacle will be out of 10 possible points. The Yosemite Rancher is fully customized with bumper and exhaust options that provide the most ground clearance. It also has stock suspension. Again, if you have any questions as to how each of these obstacles are scored in full detail, please refer to the tutorial video which is linked in the pinned comment. So starting off with the incline test from a flat surface, the Rancher has good traction, but its weight is what really makes it struggle in this test giving it a 5 out of 10. In stage 2 of this test, where it started at an angled position, it struggles even more which gives it a 3.5 out of 10. If we take both those scores, we get an average of 4.25 for the incline test, which is a pretty average score. Next up, we have the dirt incline test. The rancher's good traction from its 4x4 drivetrain and good torque allows it to easily make it up to the top, which gives it a 10 out of 10. This is by far the rancher's biggest strength, as it can climb up most steep dirt inclines, which is really impressive. Dirt braking is very good for a vehicle that's so heavy. It stops before the last red block, so according to the markers, it gets a 10 out of 10. Rock crawling for the Rancher is good, but its long wheelbase makes it bottom out a lot over the obstacles. Through all three obstacles, and unfortunately bottoms out a total of 7 times due to its low ground clearance in combination with its wheelbase, which unfortunately gives it a 3 out of 10. However, in stage 2 of this test, which is subjectively scored, it has no hesitation over the first two obstacles, but it does have a little bit over the last one. It's not really quite on par with the top rock crawlers such as the Sand King or the Riata, but it's still really good. I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. So if we take both those scores, we get an average of six for the rock crawling test, which is above average. It really suffers again in terms of ground clearance. If there was an option to maybe lift it higher in the suspension category, it would do a lot better, but stock suspension is all we have, unfortunately. Powertrain is very good. We only see a very slight loss of traction from the driver's side rear wheel, which is very impressive. It gets a 9 out of 10 for this test. Next up, we have the bumper clearance test. So it does scrape twice on the rear bumper. It seems to have a lower hitbox on the bumper itself, which is really quite unfortunate. But anyways, it gets an 8 out of 10 for this test. Suspension travel is above average. According to the markers, it gets a 6 out of 10. High speed stability is very good, but not on par with the top trucks, it gets a 9 out of 10. Next up we have the deep water testing, and this is where the rancher does have a little bit of an issue. It slows down in the water a lot more than most off-road vehicles, almost like a car. It's almost as if Rockstar kept the coating for the normal Yosemite, and I think that's what happened. Anyways, in stage 1, it barely makes it to the end. The engine almost cuts out towards the end, but it still makes it across, which gives it a 10 out of 10. In stage 2, which is the deeper side, it unfortunately dies right at red block number 7, which gives it a 7 out of 10. If we take both those scores, we get an average of 8.5 for the deep water test, which is similar to what we see from most SUVs. So really not that great in comparison to some of the larger trucks. Also to note, I did test the snorkel upgrade separately, and it unfortunately does not work. 
This is the case with most trucks in the game anyways, but I figured since it was a Benny's upgrade, I thought Rockstar might find a way to make it functional, but unfortunately it doesn't work. And finally, we have the dirt acceleration test. This path is exactly a quarter mile long. Using the handbrake launch, it gets a very impressive 13 second quarter mile. This gives it a 7 out of 10. Add it all together and the off okay ability score is 77.75 out of 100. So for the rancher being an off-road truck, it's honestly not really that great of a score in comparison to most of the off-road capable vehicles in the game. You can see here it does get 19th place out of the ones I've tested so far. It mainly struggles with the incline test due to its weight and the rock crawling test due to its ground clearance and in the deep water test as well. It really does need a suspension lift option in game in my opinion, less speed loss in the water and it would be a very good off-roader. Now if we compare it to all the vehicles I've tested so far from all different classes including SUVs and some others, that places it here in 19th place as well, right between the Hellion and the Sand King. Keep in mind that these positions may change as I test more vehicles and newer ones release. All in all the Rancher is a decent choice for off-roading if you stay away from the water sections and intense rock crawling areas where the clearance is an issue. The Yosemite Rancher costs over $1.5 million with upgrades and is by far the most customizable truck in the game, but also one of the most expensive. So is it worth buying? Well, I believe that's up to the buyer because of the amount of customization it offers, it really does make it enticing. However, if you don't care too much about the customization, I'd say the best value is still the Camacho at 345,000. But again, what really makes the Yosemite Rancher so special is the fact that it's a Benny's off-road vehicle with tons of customization and above average off-roading ability as you just saw. Well, that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, if you'd like to see the other videos on the other vehicles I have tested so far and how the Class A Yosemite Rancher compares to all the other vehicles, I will link the playlist down below in the pinned comment as well as the spreadsheet which will contain the most updated breakdown and scores for all the vehicles in one place. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.